Okay, welcome to the latest Starbase summary. You've got me, unfortunately, this time, a Yorkshire version. I do believe we're going to get an incoming booster any second, so I'm going to be quiet while we listen to the glorious sounds of Booster 14 returning any second now. Absolutely glorious. I'm never going to get bored of that. I don't get bored of Falcon 9 landing, still don't get bored of them, and I won't get bored of this anytime soon at all. This is going to be something we're going to see quite regularly. Less of the wobble, I would assume. They're going to get these things right. I think this was still an improvement on last time, the first time they caught a booster. And it's just now a case of seeing how fast they can turn these boosters around. But look at this view from Jack. Wow. Epic. No way I'm going to talk over that sound. That sound is glorious. There's the angry face, the QD. It looks like an angry face in chat and I can't unsee it now. And it's just spewing out fire. That's fine. That's nominal. Well, I say nominal. That's something we've seen before. And it hasn't affected things. They did save the vehicle and managed to get it down onto the orbital launch mount. So that is fine. I think they'll probably get rid of that in the future. I think that's something they do want to get rid of. Here we go. Here we can see him lowered onto the orbital launch mount. And it was quite impressive how fast they've sped this up as well. This is something that's going to speed up a lot in the future. This is where they want to get to the point where in the future, they're going to be relaunching these things every single day. And that is going to be crazy. That is years away, but they're going to get this timeline down from recovery, from the chopsticks down to the orbital launch mount and refurbishing. There is Booster 14 on orbital launch mount. Mary with an epic view again. Mary, our original person who gets all these amazing content. And the reason why I've got a YouTube channel and here we can see, you can see the ship quick, dis quick, ship, I can never say this word properly. Ship, disc, quick, quick disconnect <laughs> at the top there. We'd like to get some closer views of that to see how it's performed because that's something they've improved since during these launches where it's not been too damaged because that is relevant to turnaround time. And there's a second tower in the background there. We're going to see some more of the second tower soon later in this video as well. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. And again, this is something they're going to have to look at for refurbishment. There, you can see crews already looking at the vehicle and checking it over. That'll be a quick look report. They'll get more detailed information on how this boost is done and its potential for a reflight. Again, that's too soon to talk about, but the potential for a reflight in the coming weeks, as we've seen with them inspecting Booster 12 from the previous catch. It, it's still bonkers to me we're talking about this. I thought it'd be a long while off before we start seeing boosters being caught, never mind the potential of being reflown. But yeah, there's a nice little uh, tilt up as Jack likes to insist. I used to call it pan up for years and years and years. And then Jack told me off. He says, no, pan is left to right. Tilt is up and down. So this is a tilt up the booster. You can see the chopsticks keeping a nice little hug. It's just that landing pin it lands on. It's crazy. It really is just a small thing. And they get it so right now. It, it, it's impressive because the chopsticks will change. The design will change. They are too long. That's a true story. They are too long. They realize that they can make them a lot shorter. And that'll be even better for the way they translate to catch these boosters. So that's something positive for the future. And eventually ships. Ship catch. I think we're a while off still. They're hoping for Flight 8 with the ship catch. But I think now with what happened with Flight 7, we might be waiting a few more flights yet. I don't know. Let's see. You know what SpaceX is like. Again, the second tower in the background. Something to keep an eye on. And the production site on the left-hand side. Mary gets this view. She knows what she's doing. You get all of the sites there. And there we can see... The cranes, the cranes are the big thing with Starbase followers. Everyone loves the cranes. They all know the names. We've actually spoken to some of the companies before, you know, and they do say, oh, well, we watch your videos, we see our cranes in action. Because a lot of the cranes are hired by the companies, are hired out, leased out, because they are not cheap. SpaceX has bought some of their own cranes since. But this is pad B. This is the second pad. This is getting more and more interesting by the time. They're putting up that jig. It looks like parallel bars from the Olympics. 
and that's where the jig will be used. We've seen it before. The jig will be used to install the carriage and chopsticks together before lifted onto the tower. Venting. Is that the perp vent? I think that's the perp vent. The famous vent. But this is where they take booster 14 off the orbital launch mount. You can see some inspections with the torches there. <laughs> it's more of, a, more of a spotlight than the torch. And the famous engine. Wait for it. Where is it? We got, I'm sure we get to see it. The Pi engine. Which has flown before. It flew on Flight 5. And they've reflown that engine. That's a milestone in its own. Right. I remember asking Elon when they got Flight 5's booster back. Booster 12. Saying, maybe you'll give you some engines. Take them to McGregor. He goes, yeah, absolutely. Well, not only have they tested them at McGregor. But they've also got the data to say this is confident we can refly this Raptor. And that is something special. Because that is another milestone. Glorious views here with the spotlights. It was very handy for our cameras as well. <laughs> I must admit. They didn't do a spotlight for our cameras. I can guarantee you that did a spotlight for themselves. But we get to benefit from it as well. I do like the green lights on the tank farm, by the way. It does look very fancy. You can see the drone there as well. And now onto the transport stand. Ready for its trip down Highway 4 back to the production site. So we'll have two now. Two flown boosters. This is, again, I think this is too soon. You write in comments. I, let's be as interactive like a, like a Raptor side. Write in the comments if you thought this was way ahead of your expectations. Speaking of expectations, this is for Flight 8. This is, this is Ship 34. It's undergoing its cryo-testing. There's no Raptors on it yet, so the static fire test is still a while away. But that's the next one. Oh, there's a question in chat. Look, a question in the actual thing. When do you think they were reflown again? Right, so... That's something to add your comments to the comment section. We do read the comments, by the way. Good and bad. I'm sure there'll be a few bad ones because of my voice. <laughs> it's okay. I'm old. I can take it. There's Booster 14 returning to the production site. Again, I find this view is amazing because, let's face it, we've been following Starbase since it was basically just a tent and hopper. And also <laughs> just um, a basically a big compacted pile of sand at the launch site. And it really has expanded over the years very impressively. Going back into the Mega Bay. There we go. The Stex signs on the office works now. That's going to be a, a busy hub for the SpaceXers. We do expect the production site to change again. Probably some kind of Star Factory Mega Bay version of it. Where they're going to take the Mega Bay and High Bay down. And the Stargate. And rebuild something bigger there. There we go. There's a the carriage system. This is Pad B again. This is the carriage stick system that the chopsticks are used to be translated on. And it's the key part of the Mechazilla system. I'm sure we'll get some SPMT sounds coming soon. So I'm very careful not to talk too much over this. But yeah, impressive sight. Going past our own highway camera on our own plot of land. This is our land, by the way. We don't just stick a camera in the ground and hope for the best. We own this land. Which was a crazy investment at the time. <laughs> One where I kind of like sweat quite a lot. So thanks to all your support, by the way. I'll keep mentioning it. I do mention in Raptor sites. I'm treating this like a Raptor site. Because I'm watching this live for the first time, by the way. And that's what we do with these commentaries. But yeah, thanks to your support, we can provide you these amazing views. This is from Starbase Live. We take the video and put it into our dailies and our summary videos. And there it is, at Pad B. Ready for its little lift and translation. I know Mary's got footage of this because I've seen Mary's photographs. Here we go. I'm sure it's the lift part. You can tell I'm actually watching this for the first time along with the rest of you, probably. Because I'm just expecting this, but I don't know when it'll be in the video. I'm sure it'll be soon. Oh, no, we're going to pad A first. <laughs> I see, told you. Again, the condition of pad A after a launch is going to be key as well. I think they've improved that a lot as well. And this orbital launch mount is the old design. This will eventually be replaced. When the orbital launch, orbital launch mount 2 goes to pad B, they're going to, this is what Elon said, they're going to take off pad A from operations i don't know how if it'll happen immediately or at some point in the future but then they'll modify pad a and that includes its all own orbital launch mount i wonder if they'll get new chopsticks as well because they've been working i don't know if they need to but we'll see because we'll see at sanchez site if they start doing some more chopsticks then we'll know if they're going to do some more they might even do it at roberts road and then take them on the boat on the boat trip so again we'll get to see because we've got flyovers at both places so we'll get to see what they're doing there's a ship quick disconnect arm. I can still, I've got to be careful saying it because I just get mumbled my words over it. 
But that is impressive if that's been undamaged as well. They've learnt more. Oh, can we put a camera on there, please, SpaceX? Please, SpaceX. Elon, if you're watching, can we have a camera on there, please? <laughs> vaporizers! They're always doing this. I've noticed this quite a lot. They're bringing in more and more vaporizers. I wonder if this is very much Pad B related for extra capacity. Or if they're just modifying and replacing. I'm sure if Ryan, Web where Ryan Webber was on here, he'd be telling us exactly why. Oh, we should just watch the Spanish version. Alex does a Spanish version of this. He'll know. Sp he'll be talking in Spanish right now, saying, Oh, yes, this vaporizer is for this, for that, and this, the other. Should have listened to it and done a Google Translate. Always activity. This does make me feel it's Pad B related, by the way. I am guessing, so don't quote me on that. But it'd make kind of a lot of sense because it's going to share the tank farm with Pad A, but obviously you need extra capacity for different pads. There we get. There we see. I told you we had views of this. This is where the carriage system has been translated, ready to be put on the beams. Then we should see the sticks rolling out. The sticks are at Sanchez. We know they've been built. So we're waiting for the sticks to roll out, and then they'll install the sticks onto the carriage system out here on these bars, and then the whole thing will be lifted onto Pad B. And then Pad B will have chopsticks. It doesn't mean Pad B will be ready because they still need the orbital launch mount, but this is a big key factor. And it does make you think, maybe, that, like, you know, 39.8 at KSC, that's got its chopsticks. So maybe they could do some testing with it. Maybe with a test tank or even with a, even with Booster 14. Imagine that. Booster 14 gets to at least do some playing at Pad B. That'd be interesting to see. Anyway, that's the video. Um, my voice probably annoyed quite a lot of people, but there we go. You got a Yorkshire version for free. But thanks to all our amazing content um, providers such as Mary and Jack for all these views and for Thomas for editing the video. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, goodbye.